Hello and welcome to this video about color and polarization. We're going to talk about things like why do bananas look yellow? Uh, we'll look at light versus pigment colors and we're going to look at polarized light. As you know, um, objects absorb certain wavelengths and reflect others. So the color of an object depends on which wavelengths of light are shining on it and which wavelengths are reflected. In this case of our bananas, we have all the different visible wavelengths of light that are shining on those bananas, and we only have the wavelengths that are the yellow color being reflected. Therefore, the bananas look yellow. If all the wavelengths of incoming light are completely reflected by an object, then the object appears the same color as the light that is illuminating it. If we look at this very pretty white bird, um, and all the different wavelengths of light in sunlight, all the visible light colors of light would be all of these different wavelengths are hitting it, um, all of them will be reflected and that gives us a white appearance. This object here, at least the red parts of this, are reflecting the red wavelengths. This object is reflecting the green wavelengths. An object that reflects no light will appear black. What is a filter and how are colors filtered? A filter is just a transparent material that selectively transmits light. So if we have white light with all the different colors and we pass that white light uh, through a blue filter, only the blue wavelengths of light will be transmitted through that blue filter. And if that blue light happens to hit an object that would normally be uh, red in appearance because it reflects red wavelengths, we will see that red object um, from this light as being black because there is no red light that is able to be reflected off that object. Um, and so it will appear to be reflecting no light, which indeed it is because it's not reflecting the blue light, it's absorbing it. So let's take a look at the primary colors of light. Uh, the primary colors of light are green, blue, and red. Um, if we were to pass um, light through a red felt filter and we were to pass light through a green filter and combine those together, a patch of yellow light would appear. Um, yellow uh, combined with blue light will give us white light. So we call yellow the complementary color of blue. And you can see where um, these different complementary colors are formed between the three primary colors of light. We call uh, light colors additive. These are the prim additive primary colors because they can be added together to form white light. When all the colors exist together, uh, we get white light. This is different from the color of pigments. Uh, when you were in grade school, you learned it, and you know this, if you take all your paints and throw them in a bucket together, you're not going to get white. You're going to get something very different than that. Um, that's because pigments are sub have subtractive primary colors. And the subtractive primary colors for pigments are yellow, magenta, and cyan. And you should know this if you've ever changed um, toner cartridges for your printer, you'll see these same three colors because uh, those in combination to different degrees are going to be able to produce all the different colors that you need for, as far as pigments go. Um, they're called subtractive because they filter out all the light when the com they're combined. They rely on colors of light that are absorbed or subtracted um, from the incoming light. Now let's take a look at polarized and unpolarized light. What does that mean? What are we talking about? Let's go back to our EM waves. Remember they are oscillating magnetic and electric fields. They're oscillating uh, perpendicular to each other and they are transverse waves. This is traveling in this direction. When we have light waves with aligned electric fields, they are called linearly polarized. So here in, in this case, these electric fields are aligned with each other as these waves are traveling like this. If they are aligned with each other, then we have linear, linearly polarized light. If they are not aligned with each other, we get unpolarized light. When we have unpolarized light, 
we have electric fields that are oscillating in random directions and so there would be a pattern like this. It could be r any different random direction that we're seeing the light. Whereas if we have polarized light, we're going to see uh, linearly polarized. It will be traveling in the same direction. So how does light get polarized? We have this magic little polarizer here. How does that work? So we're going to look at three different ways light can be polarized. The first one is through transmission. And when we talk about uh, light being polarized via transmission, we're going to use a picket fence analogy. Um, here we have a, a white picket fence. How cute. Um, think about transverse waves traveling, and as the transverse waves are traveling toward this white picket fence, the only ones that can get through are the ones that are going in this direction so that they can travel through. They're going to travel through this um, this polarizer and then they'll travel through this polarizer but waves that are traveling at a different angle if the transverse wave is is perpendicular to this it will not be able to pass through this polarizer also if you have let's say two different polarizers we have this one here and this one here and we place them at 90 degree angles to one another uh, none of the light can pass through another way to think of that here we have a randomly unpolarized light. Um, here would be our polarizer. Uh, we call this the transmitting axis. And only linearly polarized light is going to be passing through this transmitting axis. Uh, transverse waves that are at any other angle than this angle right here will not be able to pass through. If we add another linear polarizer that is at a 90 degree angle to the first polarizer, we get no light passing through. Another way that light can become polarized is through reflection. And that means that when light is reflected at a certain angle from a surface, that reflected light is completely polarized parallel to the reflecting surface. So if we Think about this surface right here um, as being parallel to the ground. Maybe it is the ground. The light that is uh, reflected is going to be polarized horizontally. We'll get polarized light that's polarized horizontally. That's what you see when you have those glaring, uh, that, that very intense glare that is being reflected from um, roads or bodies of water. So because the light that causes glare is most often um, horizontally por polarized, it can be filtered out by a polarizing substance whose transmission axis is oriented vertically. So you can see that the vibrating uh, waves are able to pass through the vertical, vertically oriented transmission axis and the horizontally um, transmitting ra uh, rays of light will not be able to pass through. This is how sunglasses are able to reduce glare. So one final way that light can be polarized is through scattering. Scattering is a process of absorption and re-radiation of light by particles. How does that happen and what does that mean? Um, well, light uh, in our atmosphere, the sunlight, ends up being polarized in this way. We have unpolarized sunlight coming in. It hits different molecules in the atmosphere. When an unpolarized beam of sunlight strikes this air molecule, the electrons in that molecule begin vibrating in the same plane as the electric field of this incoming wave. They then re-radiate that light and it's polarized in the direction of those electron oscillations. So uh, the component of polarized light parallel to the Earth's surface is also polarized. Some advanced ideas. How do our eyes see color? Um, how does that work? And what's different about individuals who are colorblind? Uh, what are some applications for using polarized light besides sunglasses? Any other ideas or questions or applications you'd like to look at? Please uh, feel free to do that. I look forward to seeing your ideas and we'll see you in class.